Where's duster for this thing? Right, okay, good morning. Okay, let's finish this by 10. Can we do that? <laughs> All right, um, have you watched the introduction video? Yeah. Do you understand? No. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> okay, Any, anybody like didn't watch at all because you just refuse to be part of the universe. So people, people have read it. Okay, in essence, what, what do you think the idea of doing PCA stands for? Principal Component Analysis. What, what, what do you think? <coughs> the, the, <coughs> you see, um, in any system, artificial system or natural system, when you are being presented with more than what you need, the excess usually are noises. Okay? There are noises. It's like you, you are, as an individual on this planet, how many human population now? Eight billion, right? Eight billion. I, I remember when it hit seven billion, that was in March. 2008 yeah I think that was also the month our country had general election like like we, we just had last month so like what after like 15 years or so BAM another 1 billion people that's very fast oh, oh, do you think it's a lot of people now no you want more people <laughs> okay all right so there are many people Okay. However, you want to find your life partner. You you only have to find one. Can can you be partner with the rest of eight billion? So, uh, for how 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 do you sort out the rest of the population? Because you can only choose one. One is important. I mean, like the rest of the eight billion are still human, but there is only one human that you can pair up with for, for your life partner. Eventually, you're going to find this one. What happened to the remaining seven, nine, 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 nine? Why, why don't you choose the rest? Why you eliminate the rest? It doesn't meet the criteria. Yes, simply doesn't meet the criteria. You as the chooser, as the decider, you have selected some of this criteria, some of this characteristic, and this must be met first before can be into your shortlist candidate. Okay, so French PCA kind of like that. When you do experiment, you're going to measure a lot of things. Okay, and these things very often they're going to fall into different categories in plant science. Remember, plant science is a big subject. What department is this now? You are in now. This department, what is it? Crop science, okay? See, that's already specific, crop science. Meaning that it's dealing with plant of commercial importance, okay? So when you become more and more specific, when that is your intention, you need to maybe not eliminate, you kind of put those who are not important at the back. You pay attention. I mean, like you are not, you don't want to eliminate anybody. They are still part of the system, but those who are important, high priority, you put to the front, pretty much like your life partner you're choosing. When you have chosen one person, do you kill the rest of seven, nine, 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 nine? They are still there. They are still there. But who are the most important now? And those that are important, right in front. And this is the one that you face directly. So this is what PCA do to you.
Um, you, you do various measurements and whenever you do measurements or observation, you're going to get your parameters, okay, to represent the population. Height, plant height, plant weight, um, soil elemental reading, photosynthesis, what else? It doesn't have to be number, okay? It can be it can be quality as well. Blue, red, green, brown, healthy, not healthy, wilted, or not wilted. These are all observations. So these observations for a given situation, some of them are going to be more important than others. They do not have the same power to be of equal importance. This is not the cake you divide equally into eight so that each person receiving can be equally happy. No, this you're dealing with nature. The fact about nature is one thing is going to weigh more than the others. So PCA, um, this, this is, this, this is the, the, the idea of it. It reduces dimension of your data. When you have various parameters or variables that you have measured, 15 of them, I mean like, you, you want one single point, when it is on paper, it can represent the whole, the whole 15 variables that you have. So for example, um, I say that this is your variable one, this is your variable two, so it's very easy, it's very easy. When variable x increase this much, variable 1 become this much. So this is why we call this 2D, 2 dimensional, because you got these two variables. What if you want to have another variable onto the same um, graph as well? You need to add more axes, something like this. Say that maybe the, the third um, variable, maybe uh, if this is plant height, this is photosynthesis, maybe this is a uh, leaf number. Okay, so since this has been added, this point here is no longer correct because this point originally that I put only account for two variables. Now maybe to satisfy this, you need to move it somewhere here. This is 3D now, okay? You see? What happens when you have 10, 15, 20 variables? Do you have any idea how, how many how many this you need to create? So it's all it's impossible for human to interpret this any longer. Because according to theoretical physicists, how many dimensions can you have on this universe? Now, you are living in what dimension now? How many dimensions that you are dealing with? Now, that, that you are aware? Three. Up, down, left, right, you know, diagonal. Just three? Usually we put four to put time. Hence, the, the terminology is time and space, which, which is something popularly described by Einstein. Time rel relativity. So fourth dimension. However, um, physicists, they have made a lot of calculation. They have made a lot of experiment and stuff. You can have on this dim universe the maximum of 11 dimension. And obviously, this extra dimension is something you cannot see. But you are part of it. You are part of the space-time fabric in this universe, okay? So even in universe, maximum 11 dimension that you can deal with, if you have 15 variables, that means that, it, that that's just not possible. That's just not possible. Something needs to be done to this to reduce the dimension so that you still capture the essence of your data. Okay, that is the basic of that. All right, so PCA helps you to do that. It's, it's quite ma magic, actually. Okay, so when you have all of these various dimension, PCA do the calculation, and how does it do the calculation? 
<clears throat> um, simply put, I don't want to go too much into the mathematics of it. That's why I give you the video. Oh, if you want to know uh, more, I'll uh, ask um, him because I explained to him. Or oh, you want to explain now? How, how, how the variation is calculated? It's a, it's a, it's a com, com, rather complex mathematics, actually. Um, the way it is calculated is, um, number one, um, PCA obtain the highest variation for each variable. Okay, and then number two, PCA obtain um, um, the last error or residue for each variable. How does it do this? Very, very briefly, let's say that you have a set of data for, for a a pair of variables, let's say that photosynthesis and plant height, and then you just scatter your data onto this. X, Y. So let's say that this is the data that you get when you scatter it on the plot. N nothing else to worry about, you just want to scatter it. So this is the, what you get. So PCA, it will move this point so that whatever in between here is always at the origin here. So PCA do this. So instead of having this, PCA move all this point to this middle. So now you will have something like this. Okay. Look at this, look at this um, data set here. By eyes, we would see that this is in the middle, right? Right. That is not optimum for mathematical calculation. So what PCA does is, it moves all of this data point to the origin, zero, zero, coordinate zero, zero. So it moves here. It moves here, so now this is the origin. That's step number one. Number two, once it has moved here, PCA will start to test what is the best fit line for this data scatter. So the, the data, sorry, the best fit line can be like this. Can I do not know how 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 many how how many degree can you have for a full circle? Right, three hundred, sixty, hundred sixty or hundred sixty five. Three hundred sixty. So PCA start to make this. Um, best fit line in each degree. How it decide to stop? How do you think? Yeah, it, it decides to stop when it has met one point that fulfill this. Okay, let's say for, for the sake of example, this is the best fit line. Why it decides so? So let's say that this is the line, the best fit line. So this point here, your data point here, PCA will project it to the proposed line here. So you would have your line here, right? Yeah. So this, there is a distance here. There is a distance here. So this, this distance here is um, either one of these. It depends on the direction of this um, best fit line. So you got one distance here and then there is another let's see I'll put it here oh maybe not. that's not optimum You see, it forms a triangle. So for a given triangle, there is always a hypotenuse. And hypotenuse is always the longest, longest line. 
when it is the longest line, it will fulfill highest variation. Okay? When there is a side which is the shortest, it will fulfill the least error or residue. Okay? That's how it's done. Can you still follow? Can you still follow? All right. So if you um, open the um, notes that I've given the, for the articles that I've, I've, I've asked you to, to read, I think in the second article, it, it tells you um, this thing. I think it should be this thing. Let's see. I just want to show you how, how it's moved. Oh no, it's not here. Why, why this, this go? Why, why didn't you say anything to me? Because this thing, oh, oh, buka for long song. If you open it, <coughs> this is the first article. Uh, one moment, one moment. It's not opening. Why is it not opening? So this is the first article. There is a second article actually. Um, mm, oh, maybe this one. Oh, this one is fine as well. Yeah, this thing here. Can I see? So whatever that you're seeing now is this thing. PCA is moving it. It's moving it 360 to find a best fit line in order to fulfill this law. The last error, highest variation. Just that. So of course, when, when it moves, this thing is going to change. Sometimes it's the longest, sometimes it's the shortest. However, there is a one sweet point, and then it will stop. The moment it finds the, the point, so wherever point that it gets, it will start to calculate two things. Okay? The, the distance, this variation distance, the distance, this is for one variable, plus the second variable, plus the third variable, plus the fourth variable. And all of this will become the, when you square it in mathematics, when it is on the negative side of the quadrant, we square it so that the value is not cancelled out. So we square, we square whatever distance from the original point to the proposed best fit line. We call it sum of square distance. Okay? Sum of square distance. All of this sum, meaning that the collection of this. How many these? Depends on your variables. If you have four variables, five variables, then this, the D will be four or five. And this thing, there is a name for it. Eigen value. Okay, right? <clears throat> so, since this is variation, Or variation. This is all synonym, okay? I just want to tell you something when you read the book, why this sometimes is calling this terminology? Why it is called this terminology sometimes? There are synonym, sy synonym, synonymous, okay? Eigenvalue is actually the sum of the old variation. So when you get your variation, right, when you get your um, variation. This is actually your variance in your regular statistic. If you look at sum of square, and when you divide it by the number of sample, have you seen this formula before? Sum of square divided by sample minus one. 
Have you seen this formula before? What formula is this? Standard deviation. So this is your statistic. Okay. This is why people hit uh, PCA. You already have your trigonometry here. Okay. So your trigonometry, your, your Pythagoras theorem. C plus. So this is Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem. And suddenly you have your statist, uh, uh, your standard deviation here. All right? Okay. I just want to explain up to this point. Okay? So that you know where this eigenvalue come from and where is your variation, individual variation component come from. Your individual variation come from? From this. Your eigenvalue is actually the sum of all variations added together. All right. Okay, still alive? Still alive? All right, okay. So let's do the exercise, how to do your PCA. You should know this first, because the moment you, you have your PCA running, you will have the values. So it's always good to know where the value briefly came from where. Okay, so if you open your um, PCA, she, oops, why, 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 why? Yeah. <coughs> okay. Oh, before I go further, any question up to this point? This is not statistic just yet, okay? This is not t test, this is not ANOVA, this is purely geometric. Okay, good, good, all right. So, this data point actually half came from wherever that you have, you have worked on. Remember, you were counting the rice data? Yeah. And half of it from um, uh, previous semester work. Okay, so we combine together. So you're going to see um, T8, P1, T8, sorry, sorry, C, uh, 219P, 219C. P means it has been prime, prime with um, early vigor seedlings, meaning that when we grow the rice, the rice baby has been primed with early vigor condition. Early vigor means we, we make sure that the baby of the rice is super happy. Not conventionally, you just have the rice sown, super crowded in one tray. That's the conventional way of doing it. So with the prime way of doing it, we have the rice seedling sold one by one. So the rice is very privileged, it's very happy. Okay, That's all the treatment is. And C is the conventional way of doing it. <coughs> so that's what this means. Yeah, yeah. So what I want you to do is now, um, don't worry about the first row, okay? The first row is the original labeling. For the sake of PCA, usually we don't include the unit because it just makes things messy. Even better if, if you can turn it into abbreviations or code, okay? All right, and then open your... Anybody have, have, have done this ahead of time? No? Oh, uh, okay, that's weird. Why is it not passed? Oh, this, that's, shouldn't it be the past thing? Why, why is it a photo director? Huh? 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 Okay, all right, okay, not to worry, not to worry. Okay, so open this thing. Um, we, we use a very simple software, number one, because it's free. Number two, if you don't have money in the future and you need to publish 
you know when you publish sometimes you cannot use the pirate software so much you know high and sometimes journals kind of scrutinize you for that at least you have the um free version of, of this okay there are many software for pca even more super more beautiful than this okay this is very simple but it still works okay so what you need to do is we need to transfer the extra data to this so you need to turn on this row these two two things here and then make sure this thing is highlighted this one cell here not here not there here okay so highlight all of this all the way to the down so this has been um oops this has been arranged for you to make your life easier copy and then you can paste it right so make sure that everything is okay all the way to the to down here how many parameters do we have here? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Fourteen. Fourteen. If you were to do this one by one, literally will die. It's just not possible. Okay? So we use PCA to, to, to understand the, the the dimensionality of your data point. Okay. So when, once we have this, um, the, the idea of PCA, if you have, you want to have something like this. So we want to color each of our population with one color. So now, since we have four population, T8P, T8C, 219P, 21C, we need to color this. So to color this, you need to click the row that you want to color. For example, I'm going to have 48 now. Highlight the row and then go to edit and row color. So you can use choose the color, whatever color that you want. So for this, maybe I want to go with the uh, dark blue. Okay. Uh, close. So it will change to dark blue. So let's do this first. Uh, uh, I want to color this. Okay, uh, what color I want? Mm, I don't want. I don't want blue. Maybe light blue. Any light blue here? Okay, royal blue. Okay, royal blue. And then for the two one nine population, two one nine p population, I will have. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh. This is just coloring. Okay, okay, all right, okay. One moment, one moment, one moment, one moment, one moment. One moment. Okay. Um where 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 did, where did you where did you get lost? Oh, okay. This thing. <clears throat> not to worry, not to worry, not to worry. I'll 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 just copy this and then let's let's have a new one. You know this thing? You don't have to install it, okay? This thing you don't have to install, so you can keep it in your pen drive or something. So it will open straight away. See a new one. Okay, turn this on, check this. Check row attribute, check column attribute, and then the click mode leave it to select and then highlight the cell here the cell that um next to this a cell above number one okay so once you have highlighted this go back to your excel highlight start from row two this row here don't include this one this one is the original one which is a half a lengthy unit we don't want that use this Okay, so highlight all of these, the name of the variables, which we have 14 variables, and then all the way down, up to here, and then copy, Control-C, then go back to your 
past um, software and then you can click paste can you follow that yes. all good okay right so just double check make sure that you have 14 variables and all every single cell is filled in like this one right it's all filled in so all good all good all good then after you have done it we need to color the population now this population we need to have a separate color this one color this one color this one color four color okay why because we don't want we don't want to get confused later so you can color whatever color you want. So to color it, click this, this row. Let's say you need to color population by population, okay? Click that and then hold shift down and then go down. Okay, so I got 12 rows highlighted and then go to edit. Go to edit, tab, now up here, and then go to row colors, and then change the color. Whatever color that you want to change, let's say you want to change to dark green. Yeah, change to dark green, and then close. You know the color has been changed when this dot change in color. That. Okay. Can everybody follow? This group, can you follow? No? What happened? Okay, um, click this, this cell. No, 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 down there, down, yeah, down, down one cell. Uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Let, let me, let me, let me show to you. Um, just one, just one. Then go back to Excel. Where is your Microsoft Excel? Yeah, copy over all of this. No, 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 not from there. Go up, go up, start from row number two. No, no, start, start from this. Yeah, start from that. Yeah. Highlight all, all the way until down. Yep. Up. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Copy. Copy. And then you can click paste. Yeah. I got it right. Okay. So double check. You got 14 rows because you have 14 variables. Okay. Now you can change the color here. Yeah, right. yeah, click that, hold shift, mm -hmm. then press down, down, okay. down, all the way until T8, 12. Okay, uh, enough. Right. Click, click edit, one. then go to row color. Then yeah, that. Uh, click the black. So yeah, change the color. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so do that until where is my past? I want to change my another color. Uh, what color should I put this one? Mm. That is crimson. I want to have something lighter. So let's make it. What color do I have? Um, light coral. I don't want coral. I don't want pink. Red. Violet, violet looks like pink, right? Orchid. Should I go for orchid? Yeah, maybe I can go for orchid. Yay. All right. Okay, so when you're done, it should look something like this. Okay? So you have four colors and all single, every single cell is filled out. Uh, is, every, is everybody okay? All good, all good, all good. Okay, when you're done, okay, this one you need to pay attention. You have 14 rows, no, no, 14 columns to represent 14 variables. You can tell PCA, do you want it to deal with all 14 variables at once or just certain variables first? You can tell PCA by highlighting this. So for the sake of exercise, I'm going to ask the PCA to deal with everything. So if you want to make PCA deal with all variables, oops, oops, oops. You just click this. So it will select all this thing at the corner here. There is a cell at the corner here. Click this, it will select all. 
Later, if you want to PCA to deal with some variables only, you just highlight this column. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Why this thing is control C? So if you only click this color, these are the only variables it will start to calculate. Okay, but now we want to have it all. Okay, so once you have highlighted all, go to multivariate, the tab on here, and then go to ordination, then go to very simple component, and then just click it. Then you're going to be presented with a new window. The original window is your data set at the back. This is a new window. Okay? So this new window, do you get something like this? Anybody not getting it? Yeah. You got it? Oh, got it. Okay, okay. Fine. You got it? Did you get it? No, no. You need to click this. The cell out here. Click that. Up, up. Up, 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 this one. Yeah, click it. Click. Click. Um, maybe you need to... Um, okay, why the computer is like this? Let's see. Oh, ini. Um, scroll, bring it all the way here. Yeah, and then click. Mm. Why is it not working? Mm. Wait, I need to see what seems to be the issue. That should work. Mm. Oh, you need to change this click mode to select. Oh. Select. And then click it. See? Oh. But you need to change the color first. Okay. This only one color. Change the color first and to make it like that. Okay. Once you're done, you're going to get something like this, right? We just, we just wait uh, a bit for your friend who are still um, doing some modification where is that window oh. I, I keep losing this thing uh yeah i want this don't worry i'm going to wait for you yeah change the color you know how to change the color no no don't do don't, don't one by one do like this click this mm -hmm. Control, control, you need to click here first, control, mm -hmm. and then down. Why, why, why is it like this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, double click, and then go down. Why, oops, why? Oh no, shift, sorry, shift. Twelve, right? Yeah. Another profession. Then go to edit and change the color. I think you need to open this. Uh, yeah. You can change the color, whatever color that you want. Okay. All good. All good. I know some of you very fast. Wait. Yeah. Are you okay? This group. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <coughs> okay, I'll, I'll let your friend to change the color first. So when you got this, see, you got the oops, B eigenvalue. I hope you know what eigenvalues means now. This is why I explained this first, okay? Eigenvalues, and then you have the percent of variance, okay? For the sake of... Um, Correlation. We, you need to change this, okay? This matrix here. 
change it to correlation. We don't want to deal with covariance. It's, that's a bit complicated. We just use the correlation. You learn correlation, right? Yeah, change to correlation. Okay. Yeah, then hit recompute. And then you can, you can see that your percent of variance, you can see that it changes now. You can play around with this actually. Okay. You can have a leave it at covariance or correlation. Okay. Yeah. For, sim for simplicity, I'll just keep it to covariances because I think most people, this is how they do it using the covariance. Okay. All right. And then the tab up here, you're going to see scatter plot, something like this. Okay. Does it look small? If you look small to your eyes, make it bigger. Grow to graph setting. Then change the symbol. Make it bigger. Okay. And you can change other things as well. So that's something that you can play around. Now, um, this thing is score plot. This is the product of PCA actually. So the product of PCA, you're going to get two, three things. PCA output. You're going to get three things. Number one, you're going to get score plot. Number two, you're going to get um, loading plot. Number three, you're going to get the scree plot. These two here, score plot and loading plot, they can be superimposed together. Together, these two is called by plot. Okay? So, the, on the screen now, just to test your understanding, which one is it? Is it score, loading, or scree plot? Score plot, okay? So, I want it to have the loading plot as well. So I just click it here, the by plot. So the one that you see like needles, long lines, that is loading plot. All right? Okay? Yeah. So what else can you have here? You can have the labels, whatever, whatever that you want. Okay? Dep depending on your, depending on your appetite of, you know, decorating your PCA plot. <clears throat> what I want you to pay attention now is how PCA can quickly differentiate between two population now. Can you see? There's a two population now. My blue group is on the left side of the quadrant. This is quadrant, okay, because it got four. And my red group is on the right side of the quadrant. Why, why do you think that is? Why do you think, um, why do you think this thing is far apart? Okay. This, this is something I should have been given earlier, but I, I didn't want to give it because that just made your life easier, right? Okay. I'll give you um, the situation for this for this population, okay? So this is the description of the treatment. So T8, um, it was grown in Borneo. It was grown in Terra. Um, this is variety actually. Variety. This is variety. grown in para and this is um, actually um, um, sufficient sorry sufficient or hundred percent fertilizer no, I just use it hundred percent fertilizer this is like 75 percent. Fertilizer. Hey, wait, wait a minute. 
This is not uh, Mardin, I think. This is this is one in UPM. Wrong, wrong. Sorry, 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 sorry. This two one nine. Now this is still variety. This is by UPM. Um, this is field experiment. This is glass house experiment. Okay, and what else? Um, oh, 70% pest control. And this is like, um, this is not entirely 100%, maybe like 90% pest control. Oh no, 100%, keep forgetting. Pest control. <clears throat> Okay, when you look at here, you can see that the Borneo rice and UPM rice, they are, they are full part together. So you can already tell these are two varieties, two different varieties, two different varieties, two different locations. How, how can PCA know this? You have not told PCA about all this condition. The condition I just described just now. How can it know? Because all of this thing, it takes into account every single measurement of your variables here, the dimension here. When you measure your experiment correctly, it's very hard to simulate the data in your head and to create, you know, just some kind of random data. When the data come from the actual experiment, actual nature condition, and then you bring them together, automatically pattern will appear just like this. All right? Okay. So I'll show you how to interpret this. Okay. <clears throat> Can you see this quadrant here? Uh, I'll just uh, wrap this, okay? Just wrap this. So we got quadrant here. So on the X here, we call it the first component or PCA1. PC1. PC stands for principal component. And the vertical line, it's for the second um, PC or PC2. PC1 describe the most variation for your observation. The proof is, look at back to the summary here. PC1 alone, this line alone, this horizontal line alone, describe 90% of the variation, which is good. Meaning that one component alone has managed to describe the 90% variation of whatever that you have observed from your four population. Okay? And to make things even better, you include the second component. Second component describe about nine or six percent. So when you have first component and second component, these Two component alone ain't, um, enough. Describe about 96% of your samples variation. And you don't have to do this crazy 14 dimension thing. Can you see the magic now? Instead of having 14 axes like this, you only reduce it. That's the word. Reduce the dimension to 2D here. And it's already good enough to describe 96% variation. It's, it's variation that will determine whether your treatment is changing or otherwise. Is there anything? You know the word significant different and stuff? That, that's detect for variation. If there is no variation, your means dif is not different. Statistically not different. It simply means there is no variation. Everything stays the same. But when there is a variation, PCA can detect that and it will 
reduce the dimension, just these two. All right? <coughs> okay. So for the first component, you know that it described 90% of the variation, but you need to ask another question. From the 14 variables that you include, which are more the most important? Which have the, the most weightage? Remember, you just inserted 14 variables, right? Are these 14 variables equally important? Yes or no? Some are having more weightage, correct. So to know who has the more say, like you, you have 10 guys, you want to pick one. Why, why, why you pick the, the blue guy? Not, not the rest, the, the, the other nine. Oh, the, the, the blue guy just reach out. Right, just reach out. Don't care about the look so much. Plastic surgeon can take care of that. All right, you just, you just choose it. You got more weightage. So to know that, we go to this thing, the loading here. Okay. So this loading here will tell you um, the relative weightage of each component. If you add all of this in the same column here, 0 0.06 and all the way here, it will yield to 1, I think. It should yield to 1. Some of them is negative. Some of them comes in this form, okay? E minus 0 0.5, meaning that it's 0 0.0005, okay? E stands for exponent, okay? So for PC1, which one has the highest value? That is the most important variable for your first component. Who, who got the highest value here? See, wait, 0 0.6, right? 0 0.6 meaning that 60%, 61% of the variation is due to this seat weight for the first component. Okay. <coughs> and we already know the first component accounts for 90%. 90% of the whole variation. Okay. What about the PC2? If you look at PC2, the value of seat weight, it's 0 0.3. Is that the highest? No. Right. Who, who's the highest now? Which one? What? Biomass, this guy here. 0 0.37. It's almost the same. So it shows you that for the second component, different parameter is of the, the, the concern now, okay? So to prove this, PC1 seat weight has the biggest impact and for PC2, biomass has the biggest impact. We look at this loading plot here. Loading plot is the plot with this needle looking um, appearance, something like this, this thing, that's loading plot. So we come back to your loading plot. Uh, sorry, the, your buy plot. Look at here. Pay attention to the horizontal axis here. Which one is the longest? One direction, okay? Not, not, not the entire direction, this direction here. You can see that seat weight that's, that's, that's quite, quite to this value actually. Um, is it the same? So let me remove this group label first. Yeah. So that's actually approaching 100 value for the first component. Let me check, let me check that. Who's the other guy? Total number of spike clip. Total number of spikelet. So, total number of spikelet only 0 0.58. But the seat weight is 0 0.61. That is why you see that the weightage that they have here is about the same. We're going to this direction, okay? So, to prove that biomass have the most impact on the vertical direction, 
this direction now. Just now we are talking about this one, this direction. Look at here. See, biomass is the highest. There is nobody else higher than it. So biomass is the one that describe or have the biggest impact for the principle two. Okay. Since this is by plot, you can see that the red, the 219 rise, they are on this side of the quadrant because they simply have more seed weight. The seed weight is heavier because they are on this side. However, the Borneo rise, they are on the other side because the seed weight is not so high. Negative correlation. They are on the opposite. You, you need to have opposite. If, if one group is black, the other group is white. If one group is tall, the other group is short. So this is the case here. Right? <clears throat> what about um, this thing here? The biomass here. You can see that the points up here, we can turn on this label here actually. It's kind of equally distributed. Some components from each population, they have more biomass. That's why distinguish them from the other side of the quadrant. Okay. Which 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 side? The upper side or the lower side have more members? Upper. Upper right. Upper right. Yep. Yep. So Again, this is also the thing that distinguishes the red population from the blue population. Even though the second components only account for 6%. So these two come together. PCA decide this is your point, this is your point, this is your point. Okay? I just want to talk a bit more about this line here. This line here is actually corresponding to correlation um, degree. Let's have something like here. <clears throat> when you have your line, um, can, can you see some of the line is like this? Right, some line like this, some line like this. So this is actually your parameters. Okay? Your parameters. Maybe this is your plant height, maybe it's your, your seed weight, maybe this is this is your biomass. The the angle between variable line is actually the degree of correlation. Let's say that you have something like this. And then you have something like this. And then you have something like this. Okay. Um, we, we pick one variable, uh, two, two variables pairing. For example, um, seed weight, seed weight, biomass. We keep it the same, okay, for, for the sake of, of understanding. Seed weight, biomass. Seed weight, biomass. Pay attention to this angle here. Where's my the other marker? I thought I was holding it. <clears throat> so this pattern here. Look at the, the the angle here. Look at the angle here. Look at the angle here. Do you remember lessons from your trigonometry? This angle, what do you call it? This is called acute or sharp angle. Meaning that it is less than 90 degree. Okay. This angle is called what? Right angle. Right angle. Because it's equals to 90 degree. What about this? 
what reflex angle because it is more than 90 degree this thing when you want to talk about the correlation strength that's the word correlation strength we call this the, the correlation between seat weight and biomass we call it to be um, strong positive correlation okay for the seat weight and biomass with the right angle we call it no correlation if you are talk if you want to know about the r value the r here it's it's more than it's more than 50% usually the r value the coefficient uh, coefficient if you rem if you learn the correlation from your statistic class okay for this it's what negative correlation it just go to the other side when when this thing go to this way this thing goes to that way so this is negative correlation positive correlation no correlation negative correlation that is all the correlation strength that you need in, in statistics okay and this is described by the loading plot here all right okay so for pca actually that is all that you need to know fundamentally there is no statistic so much going on you're not talking about significant difference something not not different no you just want to understand the pattern of your data and how they correlate to each other okay okay i just want to touch quickly about the script plot so this script plot actually um it tells you about the principal component that you have it can go to up to 14 because you have 14 variables okay pca want to validate why you should only use two components you see here so script plot the the rule of thumb is you decide to use two components the moment it looks like elbow look at here does it look like elbow meaning that the moment it hits component second the second component it start to bend does it follow the rule so it follows the rule meaning that there is no need to go to the third component two components is enough but what happened if you have your elbow doesn't look like elbow like you have you have this 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 so usually my advice is maybe you want to remove some of the variables okay remove some of the variables so that it will start to look like this elbow looking remember you, you can change the the variables that you ask the pca to analyze this thing you can ask right okay all right okay that is all understanding before i go to show example of interpretation any question still breathing yep. <coughs> this this elbow here it shows the degree of can you see this thing this i the percent of um eigen value if you remember from i have rubbed that off eigen value is actually the sum of square of variations meaning that the more variations you have the higher your eigen value is okay so it seems like for the first component the eigen value already account this much and this is actually 90 percent that you saw earlier when you hit the second component to the third component it doesn't go down drastically 
it has started to flatten off. You see? So the moment this scree plot start to look relaxed, you know the component is not explaining a lot of variation anymore. It is, it is as simple as that. There is a whole of calculation going back behind it, this. But visually, this is what appears to you. Okay? So when you see something going down abruptly like this, meaning that this is of high, highest value, you see, from 10 all the way to 90. That's a lot. Variation here. And then for the second component to here, this is why you get the 6%. And then the third to fourth, you see this is almost flat. Do you want to guess what is the percent of variation that it explains for component three? You see, it's very flat here. What percentage do you think? I want to guess one percent. Is it true? Go back to the summary. What? One percent. See? One percent. And this value of one percent. On the script plot, it is reflected as flat line. Well, not so flat, almost flat. Almost flat. Okay? And the, the one with the highest variation, like the component one, it will be appearing visually as a very steep line. Okay, you get it? All right, okay, good. Okay, all good, all good. What time now? Ooh, sorry, 9.15. I have other students that I need to worry about, so I need to, to, to rush to my other students. It's like, you know, it's like I'm a nurse with the CPR machine with all the blood bank behind me. Whenever there is a problem with students, I need to go there, CPR, 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 and then I'm here. So don't be lecturer because it's very tired, tired, tiring. Okay, so let's see the real example. You need to do this exercise so that um, it, it can be useful for your own study, okay? Um, I got a paper here. So this paper is in the folder. This here, uh, for demo. PCA Romero Pedamo. Okay, so this paper is actually about um, phosphorus nutrition and also all the photosynthesis stuff, okay? So in this paper, one of the figure is actually producing PCA figure like this. Okay. Doesn't it look like yours? What do you think? Oh, where is it? This thing like to, to, to be gone. Oh, where is it? Oh, it's here. It's minimized down here. Um, so this is what you have. This is from the publication. Oh, oh sh Okay, go down here. Hmm, what do you think? Does it look similar? So this is what I got. This is from the actual publication by other scientists. Okay, so how do you describe it? Verb impacts. It's kind of pointless if people cannot follow whatever this is. So let's see how people describe it in, in actual journal. So if you open this journal here, um, I'll just put it next to each other, okay, so that you can follow. I'll just turn this and I'll just make this, yep, something like this. Okay, I hope you can follow this because you need to do this for your own group report, okay? Whatever that you have produced at the back here, try to describe it uh, on text as well, okay? All right, I'll just open this. All right. PCA analysis, figure three. This is figure three. Allow you uh, to do um, various... computation of um, a number of variables. So this, this paper, they are dealing with a lot of number of um, treatment as well. How many, how many, how many variables? 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, no, these are not variables. These are the population. Eight population. You only got four. Okay, so this is more severe. And these are the variables here. So they got the TR, uh, TR I can say for transpiration, and they got the um, shoot growth, root growth, photosynthesis, plant height, and very small. Okay. Okay, look look how it explains here. I'm just going to select this. PC1 and PC2 explain about 64% of the experiment variation. You see, that's how you report it. This is why, this is the first thing I highlighted to you. You tell, you tell to the audience the, the two components of your analysis, how much does it explain? So for your exercise, how much does it explain? 96. Actually, you're even better, okay? Meaning that better in the sense that your population here, they are really different. They are really different to the point, the variation is above 90%. Why, why this example here, the variation of the two components is 64%. That's only two thirds, almost two thirds. Meaning that, the treatment, the, the treatment that they have here, somewhat affecting not as much compared to the treatment that you have for your exercise. Okay, right. Okay, let's see what does it say here. PC1 accounted for 48%, while PC2 accounted for 15.34%. What about yours? PC1 accounted for 90. PC2? 60, okay, six, sorry, 6%, okay. And then say what, see what it shows here. And show a positive correlation with photosynthetic rate, P content and transpiration rate. So this sentence here is actually referring to this. Positive correlation with photosynthetic rate, PC2. PC2 meaning that the vertical line. Vertical line is this, going up. F positive correlation means that. So this is, this, is, this, is, this is the line here that it has here. This is the TR, PH, and P. What's the angle here? What's the angle here? What's the angle here? Is it, a, is it acute shock or acute, right? So acute, positive correlation. So whatever that I just said just now, is actually, this is also the wording that scientists use to describe it, right? Okay, and the angle included between the arrows pointing at two variables determine the correlation between the parameters. So it says it already. Actually, scientists, when they're writing, they don't have to explain this, but they know. People got trouble to understand this A. Even though this is journal, people still explain this about this angle story. I can see that some books, they don't really explain about this. So that's why people get confused more and more. You already confused with your life, and then you read about PCA. That's even, even more sad. Okay, and then sharp angles define positive correlation. So whatever that I have said just now is being validated by this text, okay, if you don't trust me. Uh, okay. You keep saying, oh, this class is a scam. Is it true? Is it true? Right. Okay. So let's see. What does it say here? Based on this, we observe... Sorry. So based on this, we observe between three growth parameters. Shoot dry weight, root length, and shoot length. Positive relationship. Where are these located? Look at here. It's down here. They are very close to each other. So the way that you look at angle is, you look at the angle between the component line. So the component line is this blue line here. So you can have two angles. It's either the angle from the component line 
to the angle of your variable or between variable this angle so you can have two angles actually so the ruling still the same if the angle between two variables still acute there are still positive correlation all right okay <coughs> and okay look at this in addition the position over the two dimension on the graph indicates how variable clustered okay this is why we do pca we want to see the cluster or the pattern of your data observation okay so for this experiment they will group into two major cluster is it true yes one cluster here one cluster here what about your experiment i keep losing this thing oh you know what i think we already got it on excel right I'll open it. Why is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yay. Hmm. Two clusters as well. Can it have more? Yes, it can have more. Three, four, depending on the direction of correlation of the variables that you are dealing with. Okay? So the cluster number can have more than two right cluster one was composed of an inoculated treatment so when you want to talk about your cluster now go to the treatment here this treatment here for your case you are using this information here whatever happening here the treatment that is being happening to each of this population you use that to explain about the cluster in this case the cluster one was composed of uninoculated treatment amended with dap bo2 asp and this is all the phosphate thing all right okay while the cluster two was composed of other other strain of rp and uninoculated treatment so you can see that to describe all of this cluster they are using the treatment similarities you can have many number of treatments for one experiment even these treatments they can be grouped together so treatments that are alike use the similarities to help with the clustering explanation for example here um, look look at this back i just want to go so what, what's so similar between the um, red and violet dots here? What's so similar about that? What's so similar about that? Same variety, correct? Same variety. What is what else is there? Same fertilizer. Same glass house. Okay same treatment so they are basic basically the same they are only differ in terms of whether they have the vigorous seedlings or otherwise that is one different things okay all right okay all right <clears throat> so and then you can see that it talks about the relative position of cluster with respect to the arrow so that's why this arrow is very important okay exerted the greatest beneficial influence on growth. So the longer the, this arrow, the more impact that it has on the components. Okay. For example, this arrow here, you see that this arrow here, it doesn't go as deep, but it go as very far to the right. Meaning that this has strong impact for the component one, meaning that component one is being affected by these three variables. Okay, and for your example, total spikelet number and seed weight is the biggest impact for the 
component one. And to prove this, when you look at the um, loading score, they should be of similar value. Is it true? Let's come back here. I keep, I keep losing this again. Is this one? Yeah. Let's look at the... I forgot just now. What is it? Number of spikelet and seat weight. Let's look at the, the scoring for this. Total number of spikelet, that is 0 0.58 here. And then seat weight is 0 0.61. They are very close. That's why they become the, the, the line here, they are of the same horizontal distance. Okay? I'm not talking about the vertical distance, okay? Right. Okay, coming back to this. Yep. Okay. So you use you use this to to understand how the cluster they are different to each other and what makes them differ? So you use this loading line to explain how they are different. Okay, as long as you are describing that, you are good to go with PCA. Okay, so that is just the fundamental of it. All right. Okay. All good. All good. All good. So what do you need to do with your exercise? Is is um. I want you to produce this, which you have produced already, and then look at the paper, how it describes the PCA paragraph. So do the same for your exercise. That's all you need to do. All right? If you can talk a bit more about the eigenvalue, meaning that if you want to, to say to people, oh, maybe we can achieve more than 90% for uh, PC, PC1. How? There is a way. How? Your PC1 is already describing 90% of variation, this component. Can you increase it? How? You can remove the variables that is not contributing very much. For example, I'll show you an example. <coughs> um, let look at PC1 here. Which, which got the, the lowest value? This is so small. Can somebody tell me which got the lowest value? <laughs> which, which variable got the lowest value? What, what is it? Blake. Which, which number, row number? Second last, blade sheet, 0 0.00001, okay, okay. What is the second lowest? Um, yeah, negative, can I remove it, sir? Okay, let's remove two. We remove the, the second from top, the second from bottom, okay? So we remove fill and fill and then we remove the blade shift okay when you account all 14 variables parameters you got 90 percent let's remove two um, so meaning that I'm, I'm going to run this again okay but without two variables is it this one no. Okay. So just now, I just want to, to, to be certain about this. Biasa dah. Kadang-kadang lecturer tu budget yang nampak pandai kan. Memang tak tahu pun. <laughs> Did I just close this that thing? Tak apa. Okay. Uh, I'm going to run this again. Multivariate, ordination, and component. Does it increase? 
What was the original? A bit. Does it increase or not? Four nine nine. So before four nine three, now it increased by zero point zero one. So okay, I know it doesn't increase very much, but it still increased. Okay, maybe we can uh, have uh, test some more. Uh, what does it look like? Hmm. Okay. Let's try to remove. Which one? Length of spikelet. Which one? This one. This one. The first one. Okay. Maybe we will uh, remove another one. Which one has got the lowest? Can you tell me? Um, feel unfeel. Actually, we can look at this thing. Spikelet? Which one? Spikelet. This one. Okay. Let's run this again. Uh. Oh, where is it? Does it increase? So it increased. Hmm. What else can you play around with this? So not okay, before I go into that, so this proves to you that when you remove variables of no variations, you can increase the strength of your principal components, which is proven by here. I know it doesn't increase very much, but it's still increasing. Okay? All right. So let's do another magic. Um, let, let, let's look at this. So these two clusters, they are far apart. How can you bring them together? So that there are only one cluster, one population now. Who, 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 which, which variable should you remove? It should be the variable with the most impact to the components, right? Which is variable that has the longest needle. This one, this one, this one. Okay, let's remove three now. Which one the, the longest? Num total number, seed weight, biomass. Okay, let's see. So this is the original picture. Let's see whether what happens to this cluster now. So I'm going to close this. Okay. Um, what are the three that I need to remove? Spikelet, this one? No. This one. Okay. Oop. Okay, why, why does it become like that? This thing. So I'll keep this. I'll keep this. Uh, this keep? No. Yes, this. Yes, this. This. Yes. No. No. Yes. Yes or no? Yes, this. No, this. Yes. Yes. So how many we remove? Uh, ah. It's all right, it's all right. Life is messy. Keep or not? Keep. Yes. Keep. Yes. No. No. Yes. Careful, careful, careful. What is? Yes. No. Okay, all right. We do again, ordination, PCA. So let's look, look at the variance. 84% now. It's very low. Why very low? I just know. Let's do the, the uh, scatter plot. I'll just make it bigger. Hmm. What happened to the scatter now? This is the original. And this is what happens when you remove the importance variation. It gets. Cluster now, it gets closer, right? Okay, since it's got closer, let's try something more drastic. Um, who else is highest? Well, 
Leave place. Okay. Leave place shape. This one, right? Okay, for us. What about Tiller? Tiller. Penny Cooper Hill. Okay. One more, one more. If I take Tiller, where is it? This one. Okay. Okay, let's do it again. Why the value suddenly become so high? <laughs> that is a, this is like the original one. Okay, that's weird. Okay. You know what? Let's try this. One, two, three, four. Okay, look at this now. I only use four variables. They, they like, this is the original thing. Come panel. Do they become closer? Yeah, All right, see, far apart. So this is why the more variables that you have for PCA, the better it is going to be. However, it depends on how do you want to how how do you want to use PCA? What is your plan to describe it? Okay, depending on your cluster and so on. Alright? Okay. I think that's all for the introduction of PCA. Okay. I don't want to go too into that. Or do you want me to go? There are many caps up there. Okay. Any question? Understand what to be done? All right, this is a very simple exercise, okay? All right, okay, this room, okay? All good, no, 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 All right, okay, yeah, any question? No, no. Okay, so can you practice this for your own experiment? Yes. All right, now that you know that, do you think it's useful? Yes. All right, okay, all right. Okay, so I think that's all for today. Uh, if you haven't got any question, um, I think I'll see you. Oh, not on Monday, but holiday, right? I don't know. This semester full of holidays on Monday. <laughs> holiday, 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 holiday. Okay. Um, I think I forgot to to give the question. I think the other group. Can you give your question to the opposite group? Yeah. Give the question, not give the answer. Okay. <laughs> so exchange your questions and then when you see me next Thursday submit to me okay all right oh not happy we're happy. happy all right okay all right okay okay I think that's all for today so I'll see you next week all right all right okay Yay.